Hello and welcome to a screencast on task 4.1. So this is the last section of uh, the mandatory units before we move on to unit 5 um, and unit 6. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to unit 4 first. So this is probably the, uh, a difficult task, I would say, in terms of that it's going to take you a little bit of time to complete this section. Uh, of task 4.1 first of all because we're starting to look at the effects of sport and physical activity on children so you can see here in the top section uh, of number one describing the positive effects um, taking part in sport and physical activity can have on children so if you've done GCSE PE um, you should be able to come up with some of the positive benefits of exercise anyway um, and if not you might need to do some research just on the internet um, to give three bullet points of uh, positive features that exist um, for when we are physically active um, as children or, or the benefits of, of playing sport. So that should be fairly straightforward first and foremost. We then come on to the num number two which looks at breaking down those benefits into both psychological and social. So if we start with psychological first um, this means you know within the mind within the brain so the mental barriers that perhaps exist in participating in sport so we need to think of two barriers that might exist in a child's mind mentally psychologically and we need to make sure that we point um, both of them out in this section here so two barriers that you'll need to think of and then thinking about how they overcome those barriers so what can we do as sports leaders to help them overcome that barrier so for example if one of the barriers was having low self-esteem or low self-confidence how as sports leaders can we ensure that we can break down that barrier so that's the key element of how to overcome the barrier moving on to the social element this is now more to do with people okay so thinking of the barriers that may impact um, child activity um, through social elements so again we need to think of two barriers here perhaps um, which relate to people so this could be for example thinking about gender issues um, that could be a barrier as to why a, a specific child doesn't play a specific sport, for example. So again, as sports leaders, how do we overcome, how can we overcome those barriers in ensuring that that child who, who feels as though is being excluded or has a barrier to do the social element, how can we overcome that barrier? So again, you'll need to find two and you'll need to ensure that you bullet point them in there and then, you know, write a bit more of a generalized statement or two in terms of how you're going to over or how we as sports leaders can help overcome that. We then move on to section three. This is now where we're really going to have to do a little bit of research because ultimately it asks describe strategies which could increase the participation levels of children in physical activity. OK, so you need to think of two school based examples of where we can increase participation among children in sport. So think of Finchley Catholic High School, think of a previous school that you've been to in terms of primary school, perhaps, or your other secondary school. And think about what examples would the P department do, what school examples would exist to ensure that we increased the participation levels. And we're not just talking about the, the statutory requirements of two hours of physical activity in PE. What about the opportunities outside of the PE lesson? So that's for the school based examples. You're then going to have to do a little bit of research on the local community initiatives. So I would highly recommend for this section looking up, googling fit and active Barnet, so the FAB project, and thinking about can you find any specific two initiatives, so two programs that exist within the borough of Barnet perhaps in getting more people involved in sport. Park runs is also another good one. Um, some of you may participate in a park run, which happens on a Saturday morning. Um, but I'll let you find out some more information about that rather than uh, spoon feeding and you're telling, telling you all. And then finally, the national projects. So what's happening throughout the country? What programs exist throughout the country on a national level rather than uh, just through local communities? So again, Sport England is definitely... The, the website to look up and you can't just write Sport England in here um, because Sport England ultimately they fund 
uh, different sports throughout the country. So when you go on their website, you hopefully might be able to find a project or initiative that they are involved in and you can include them both in uh, those two sections. And then finally, section four. And again, I would recommend doing a little bit of research here in thinking about what are the links between experiences of sport and physical activity in childhood and lifelong participation habits. So is there a link and how is there a link in regards to the, the positive experiences or the experiences just in general um, in childhood when we play sport and lifelong participation habits. So here it says you need to give two examples of this link. So again, if you Google that, you should be able to find some literature, some research, which will give you um, two you know, fairly able reasons as to think about how is there a link and why is there a link. Okay, so this section really requires you to do a little bit of reading. I'm not expecting you to do too much, um, enough to, to, to research it and show the assessor um, when he or she comes to actually uh, read in your booklet that you've actually been able to research and find a, a couple of links between uh, experiences and lifelong participation. So that's 4.1. So that is the introduction now for the last um, topic. And then we're going to now be moving on to looking at the session plans in a bit more detail. Okay, so best of luck with this one.